Welcome to the Coastal Kitchen. I'm Karen Meshures, and as we're getting closer to the 4th of July, everyone needs to have a party. We're having barbecued chicken, fried corn on the cob, dill potato salad, and lemon tarts. Here's the list of ingredients you'll need for this dish. So let's get started. First, let's make the barbecue sauce. We've got a cup of ketchup, We have two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, half a cup of light brown sugar. We have one and a half tablespoons of pepper, one tablespoon of garlic salt, one fourth cup of salt, mustard. We have one third of a cup of mustard. and apple cider vinegar, one pint. This is a vinegary barbecue sauce. It's not the traditional red sauce that a lot of people use, but it really gives the chicken wonderful flavor. Mix all this up, and once we get it mixed up, we're gonna put in a pint of corn oil. Let's pour that in right now. Stir as you pour your oil in, okay? We're going to um, let this sit for about two minutes while we salt and pepper our chicken. Here it is. Okay, I've patted dry the chicken because we want that skin to be as crisp as it can be in a barbecued chicken. And this is fresh ground pepper. I use the old fashioned pepper mill. Let's put some salt on, just like a snow shower. We're going to turn all these over and do the other side. thought about doing fried chicken, but everybody does fried chicken, so we said we'd do a little something different. A lot of pepper. All right, let me wash my hands just a second. I'm going to show you a little trick to making uh, pan cleanup easy and making sure that it fits right. I've got my oven at 350 and this pan is going to go in and I don't want to have to clean up the mess. So take two pieces of tin foil, fold it over and crease it, fold it over again and crease it, and turn your pan over. Squish the crease down, form it to the bottom of your pan, look how easy that is, perfect fit. Okay, I'm going to take my chicken and put all my chicken in the pan, nice and close. We're using thighs and uh, drumsticks. Um, the kids like the drumsticks and uh, everybody likes dark meat thighs. You can use uh, chicken breasts if you'd like. But this is really a tasty, tasty portion. Now I've got to wash my hands after playing with that chicken one more time.
after your sauce has set, let it be incorporated one more time. And you're going to reserve about a cup of this sauce to make as a serving dipping side. So we're just going to pour a little sauce over each piece of chicken. And we're going to, set, as I said, save some for um, your sauce on the table. All right, that looks great. Let's put that side piece down so we got it all together and pop it in the oven. It's going to be in a 350 oven and we're going to say about 50 to 50 minutes to an hour and we're going to check it in about 30 minutes. Okay, let's turn those potatoes on. We're having dill potato salad and I have uh, red potatoes, about three pounds, in this pot. We're going to put some salt in it because you need to salt your potatoes while they're cooking. And we'll leave those on to cook while we go to our coleslaw. Here's the list of ingredients you'll need for the coleslaw. I've already sliced up some cabbage, but just wanted to show you that number one, when doing cabbage, make sure you get that core out. Do a V cut, and you should be able to pull it with no problem. When I cut my slaw, I cut slices as thin as I can get them, and I'm going to dice them as soon as I get this done. I go halfway, and on this I definitely have to use a sawing motion. Then I'll turn my cabbage and go the rest of the way. This slaw is one of my mother-in-law's favorites, and she likes it really hot. And this is one of those places where you make it your way. You can gauge how much heat you'd like in this, and uh, the cayenne pepper really does make it hot. You get about um, a head and a half of cabbage equals about a gallon. And um, I always make this much because I'll put up two to three quarts in the, in the refrigerator because it'll hold for at least a month. All right, I'm going to put this right over here. Those potatoes are still going. Let's start with one large can of crushed tomatoes right into the pan and I'm going to turn this on um, high right now. All right, we've got apple cider vinegar, four tablespoons of brown sugar. If you like the dark brown sugar, that's okay to use. Four tablespoons of mayonnaise. We're going to put some salt and pepper in here, just a little. And now comes the hot part. How hot do you like it? I'm going to put a teaspoon in to start. Then if I need to adjust it, I will, okay? Let's get... Busy stirring this thing up. We're going to let it come to almost a boil before we add the cabbage. All right. Let's put that cabbage in. I do it the old-fashioned way. Hands are best. Mm 
Okay, we're getting full. All right, those potatoes are coming to a rolling boil. We're going to get ready for those in just a minute. We're going to cook this down and get it ready to go into the refrigerator. The one thing that you always want is to set this in the refrigerator for at least two hours before serving. Gets nice and cold. That way the heat of the cayenne can really pop out. See how pretty and pink that's turning? want it to come right back to as much of a boil as you can get it and just let it set there for about five minutes all right while I'm getting this cabbage finished why don't we take a short break and I'll see you back here in a few minutes ATMC TV and the Coastal Kitchen would like to say thank you to our sponsors at Food Lion, your neighborhood grocery store. Since 1957, Food Lion has been offering the highest quality products at low prices with great service. Swing by your local Food Lion today to find all the ingredients needed to make the meal featured on this week's show. While you were gone, my coleslaw finished up. I've got it sitting out for about 20 minutes before it goes in the refrigerator. Cover it good and tight now because you don't want any of those flavors to go away. I'll show you what it looks like in a few minutes. Our next dish to go with our barbecue chicken is fried corn on the cob. I don't know if you've ever had it, but my grandchildren love it. By the way, they made me this apron here. Um, and I'm wearing it because this is a messy job. I've already gotten most of my corn cut up because you want small pieces. Always uh, make sure you get all the silks and the corn husks off your corn. Wash it good, make sure that you don't have any worms, and take your knife, get it settled in, and hit it down hard. Keep your other fingers out of the way. We're going to do that to cut it in thirds. A lot of noise and a lot of corn. So we've got that all together. Now, the secret. We've got one egg that's well beaten. We're going to pour in a whole cup of milk. Get that all mixed up. Now, the one thing about the seasoning salt and the pepper is you want to get that on the corn when it's wet because it'll hold and won't fry off. And you want that little bit of flavor to hold. So we've got a cup and a half of flour and we've got pepper and salt and we're going to take our corn in the pep pepper in the salt mix it up pretty good this is something you can eat anytime this isn't just for July 4th this is a, a really fun quick food all right we're going to take the corn, we're going to roll it in the milk mix mixture, get those spices on, then we're going to roll it in our flour. Shake off the excess, and we're going to keep on doing this till we're all done. All right, we're down to the last two, and it's going to be ready to go into that frying pan. Now I've got canola oil in that frying pan because I want something that will withstand a higher smoke point and don't want the kitchen all smoky or the fire department coming in, okay? So we're going to put this in and it's going to fry for about five minutes. We're going to make sure that each side gets brown and crispy but does not burn, okay? So let's get this over here. This is going to splatter. I'm sure, but use enough oil that comes halfway up the corn. So we're going to try 
get in right now. There it goes. Listen to that sizzle. I love corn on the cob. I can't wait. It's the first thing that makes me know that summer's on the way. We're nearly there and we're going to get this all in. Then I'm going to check my chicken. Baste it up just a little bit more. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, we're good. Now let's take a look at that chicken. Golly, that smell is absolutely fabulous. I'm going to get my little brush. Just put a little more barbecue sauce up there on the top of each piece of chicken. And at the end, about five minutes before it's going to be done, we're going to pop it under the broiler, just brown it up and crisp it just a little bit. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, right back in. Let's take a look at those potatoes. They're about right when you can put a fork in like that, and they are just about ready. So let's turn them off. And what I'm going to do before I have to turn that corn on the cob over is I'm going to get my strainer ready here and just drain all the water off of those potatoes. Watch out for the steam. Okay. Let's let those sit, and I'm going to turn the corn on the cob. That's perfect. Look at that. Mm-mm-mm. See how quick that works? Doesn't take very long at all to get that color on the corn. Take a good look. Boy, it smells good too. All right, now we're going to take this corn and we're going to let it drain a little bit on a paper towel. Let me get a plate so it can be ready. Here we go. We're going to take that corn right out of there and get it going. While we're doing that, look at these potatoes. I want you to take these potatoes, put two or three at a time in your bowl, and we're just going to smash them. That'll give you a nice basis for your uh, potato salad. Let me grab this cutting board real fast, put these potatoes over here, and we're going to take the rest of these potatoes and cut them up into about eight pieces. Leave the skin on, okay? Those nutrients are really good from red potato skins. All right, I'm going to have to stop what I'm doing here because I can hear that corn is just about ready. Let's take a look. Oh, yes, let's put this on here to drain. And I love tongs. Tongs are such a good thing.
It's a good thing to have in the fall, too. A nice cold fall evening. All right, we're going to leave that sit there and go back to our potatoes. This potato salad, I call it a mock potato salad because it's not the same kind we always make around uh, 4th of July or Labor Day. Okay. While we're cutting, I'm going to put in some butter so it can start melting. This is a stick of butter. We've cut it up so it's really going to melt well. We're going to cut the rest of these potatoes up and we're going to take a short break while I do this and we're going to come back and make dessert right after we finish this potato salad. ATMC TV and the Coastal Kitchen would like to say thank you to our sponsors at Holden Brothers Farm Market in Shalot for supplying the fresh produce on this week's show. For over 25 years, the Holden Brothers Farm Market has specialized in the freshest locally grown produce on their 250 acres in Shalot. Swing by their indoor market located near Mile Marker 10 on Highway 17 or check them out online at HoldenBrothersFarmMarket.com. All right, we're back. Let's finish this potato salad up. We've got mayonnaise. And we have got two cups of mayonnaise. We're going to put that in while the potato salad is warm now. And get it all out. That butter has melted. The potatoes are still hot. And we're going to fold this mayo in. While we're folding, I'm going to put half a teaspoon of salt quarter teaspoon of pepper, and that's freshly ground black pepper. Get that all mixed up nice and pretty. And two tablespoons of dill weed, and this is the dried dill weed, and it is absolutely so fragrant. Makes you want to take the fork and start eating before you get it finished. Okay. Real easy, real fast other than the cooking. And it's ready to serve whether it's hot or whether it's cold. So it's the way you like it. If you want it hot, have it hot. If you want it cold, stick it in the fridge. Okay, got this ready. And what we're going to do is put this over here for the moment. And we're going to start on our dessert. Let me just wash my hands a sec. This dessert is probably the simplest dessert you'll ever make other than taking something out of a box. And we do take some of the stuff out of a box. So the first thing I'm going to tell you about, and I don't endorse any products, but I know what I found that I liked. And these little mini phyllo shells work great for a little mini dessert. So you get 15 in a package. And what I'm going to do is take lemon curd. And if you've got the time to make your own, that's wonderful. Because it's not really hard to make, but it takes a couple days to set. If you don't buy a jar, they're just about all the same. So you want to uh, have a nice, refreshing lemon taste after your barbecue chicken. You will get it from this. The next thing, so simple. Jello snack packs. There's two of them, lemon flavored, and we're going to mix it with the lemon curd. Just pop that right in there, and then we're going to take the mixer to it in just a second. We want it really well incorporated. One more. And you can see how fast this is happening. Okay. Put the mixer on and just get it all combined. Get it up nice and high because it's got to really get that lemon, lemon curd incorporated. Take a look at that color. Isn't that pretty? Now 
That's how quick it was to fix. Now let's just put it together. Take a teaspoon and about one teaspoon fills up one tart. So we're just going to fill these up real quick. And you can put these right back into the refrigerator in this container or you can serve them right away. Best part about it is we're going to put our favorite berries on top. And one of my favorite berries is a raspberry. And my husband loves blueberries. So I've got some of each. We're going to put a little bit in each one. We'll finish those up in a second. Look how quick this is. Ready to eat. And tasty too. And it looks like we've got red, white, and blue. So I hope you all have a happy fourth. I think that we're going to. We've got one more little job to take care of. And then everybody can have something wonderful to eat. We'll fix that up later. But I've got to check that chicken. It's about ready to come out and it's going to finish our meal. Oh boy. Does that look good. Let me turn the broiler on for just a second. And we will finish this up. And get ready to have a party. I certainly hope you all have a real happy, happy holiday time. A safe one. And if you'd like to um, go to ATMC's website for the Coastal Kitchen, we'll try to answer any questions you've got. We'll try to share any recipes we have. And if you have something special that you'd like to share, we'd like to have that too. Okay, let's finish this up. One of each. And see, you can pop these back in, but the one thing you want to do is serve them very shortly after you make them because you don't want that filo dough to get soft. You want it to maintain being firm, and uh, this is also a great thing for kids. They absolutely love it. All right, let's get that um, chicken out of the oven. Look, I've got a nice clean pan. Don't have to do a whole lot of washing. Get a little dish for that extra sauce that I told you about. Put that right here. We're gonna put some potato salad on our plate. Oh boy, I can't wait. One more thing and we're ready to go. Look at this chicken. Scrumptious, light, it's something that everybody loves. So have a safe and happy day. Hope you enjoy the recipes and visit us again on the Coastal Kitchen.